All right, we're back. Seems like it was only this morning we last met. Deja vu all over again. Exactly. There's actually been some decent little range stuff here. We got a push down that was viable back into the range. Pretty much has been respecting the range. But as we get closer to the number, we can probably expect that to not be true. So I'm not in a hurry to play here, but I'm definitely interested in seeing uh, how it responds. I'd love to get to a, an extreme here and see what happens. Like we're almost there in ES, but there's too much volume down here. However, you know, closer to the low 60s gets interesting. NQ, it's testing the extremes of the range, but it's too much in the middle to play that. Uh, there's really no range to go back into. This is the range here. So I wouldn't play either of these here. I would just start tuning in for FOMC. Don't forget, by the way, today is the actual FOMC. You know, we do the minutes as well. And this is the one that drags out. You know, we get the announcement, what the decision is, and then we wait a half an hour, and then we get the press conference, which creates a whole second chunk of volatility, depending on how questions are answered. So it's a reasonably good setup to play um, for about an hour. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Number one thing you want to make sure here is that you don't have any extent. Ex uh, Leftover orders posted anywhere, extraneous orders. First thing I do is cancel, make sure I've canceled everything. Because that's actually happened to me where I left an order at one end of the range or the other, and all of a sudden we're there and it fills. I'm like, whoa, what was that? So I always just look at the little dashboard in um, in Rhythmic and just I have I have it arranged so that the first column is net position and then working sell, working buyer, the next two columns. So I can immediately see if I have any hanging on, even if they're not showing up on my domes, which sometimes happens with a copier. If the master account is flat, sometimes I don't see it here and there's still a trade running um, in rhythmic. So absolutely true. Yes. And again, the best place to kind of look for that, you know, net position, working sell, working buy, you know, that's, if you have the little dashboard up with those fields, it's very easy to see what's going on and not have that happen to you. That's funny. So you only trade your cash account. I only do evals uh, for these because I figure, if I catch a crazy good trade, it'll fund that particular eval. Um, sometimes I turn my copier on and I start doing cash accounts and copying going into the press conference. But for the announcement, I just trade whatever eval. I have one eval I'm going, doing right now. It's so the last of the 25K block. The rest are all funded. And, um, you know, the risk management's a little tight in a, in a you know, $1,500 drawdown for playing FOMC. But with a couple of micros, it's fine. Just no more than that. Really, huh? I haven't had any issues with that, <laughs> Amy. I get I get good fills, and and I'm watching the the cash right next to it, and so I can tell if if it's off. In fact, while I'm thinking about that, let's put the cash down back up for ES with the full liquidity. That's one of my cash accounts there, so I could trade it if I wanted to. I'm gonna turn off MES. I'm just gonna play this in NQ or MNQ again. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing that, and it's actually been working pretty well. So if there's a really fantastic ES setup, maybe we'll trade that. But I think it's a lot um, more appropriate to trade batches of micros. And MNQ gives, you know, remember, it's important important point here. Um, interest rates, true statement, I'm about to say, interest rates affect tech stocks more than other stuff right now. Why is that? Quiz question. Anybody want to take a shot? So, if, for example, let's say they do 50 basis points. That's an upside, you know, not a total surprise, but it's the high end of the expectations. It, that is likely to financing rates. That's part of it, but that's not the key. Tech are basically long duration bonds. Okay, debt. Um, 
Okay, you guys are on kind of on the right track, but there's a simpler answer than that. Yeah, but most of, you know, the NASDAQ isn't young companies. It's it's more mature tech. So here, let's look at who's in the NASDAQ. Here's the NASDAQ. Most of these are pretty sizable companies. They're major equities. So it's a really simple one. Don't overthink it. it. The bond thing and the interest rate cost is part of it, but it's a very small part of it. There's a better reason than that. Anybody want to take a shot? Okay, it's actually just one of those silly common sense things. Uh, I'm still not getting an answer. Okay, or nobody else is trying to guess. It's real simple. Tech for people to buy equities, they're competing with uh, with interest-paying instruments. You know, bonds, whatever, bills. So if interest rates are going up, tech's going to go down <laughs> because people are going to lean toward. Um, the interest bearing instruments because there's the interest rates are going up. <laughs> it's literally that simple. So right now tech is kind of mixed, but the biggies are all down just a little bit. So where can you get the most bang for your buck with lowest risk? Well, you know, there's another really interesting piece to this puzzle right now as well. Yeah, I mean, if you can put your money in fixed rate, you know, interest bearing instruments, you have no risk, you know, well, no, it's no sizable risk, obviously. If they're bonds, there's some risk, but anyway, so let's, let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit more. There's a couple of other angles that are interesting. Um, Hang on one second, somebody's talking to me here. Okay, so anyway, I saw an interesting comment on Twitter this morning that I totally agree with because the hedge fund guys were, were saying this exact same thing. If the market doesn't continue selling off and being a bear market, if there's any evidence of strength, guess what? We're gonna go up. Why on that one? That, that's another good quiz, quiz question. Really simple reason, don't overthink it. It's, it's related to what I talked about Monday with the hedge fund guys. What makes different than other instruments? Um, because they're, the equities in tech are more volatile. Uh, basic materials, energy, stuff like that, you know, th those are very earnings driven and they're real easy to track based on that. But, you know, um, stuff like Google and Alphabet, you know, and Microsoft, they're going to be more speculative. But too much money wanting in. You're on the right track, Amy. You're really close. I'm not sure if you got it right or not. Fund yeah, bingo, Calvin. The fund, man fund managers have to go to work. You know, remember, they make money by trading, not by sitting on the sideline. So, oh yeah, I, I, if we get a 25 basis point increase and they and they say that they're they're you know going to start backing off and even imply that a, a lowering might be possible later in the year, the market will be off to the races to the upside. Absolutely no question. But I won't go near CL. I, it, um, I used to trade oil very actively, Thomas, but there's no reason to right now, to be really honest with you. The indexes are so good. There's so many opportunities right now with the volatility. And so, you know, when you trade CL, you have no, there's nothing to be correlated with. There's a loose correlation to Brent crude, but and other energy instruments, but it, but it's not strong enough to, to trade. Whereas with the equity indexes, you have four things that all trade more or less similarly. And so that's a really powerful addition to your edge. So that's that's the reason I don't pay any attention. I, I don't even trade oil anymore. I, I a year ago I was trading oil, um, and I'm just finding there's no there's no reason to to waste time on it. I have to set up you know all, all additional charts, and you know it's a whole different workspace on my trading platform and. And I was making more money trading the indexes all the time. So I just I just don't open that workspace anymore. So that's the simple question to that. Yeah, the, oh, the indexes have been beautiful today. MNQ particularly, um, right at the beginning of the session, I was saying we got a really nice, after the open, we got a really nice push down over here, you know, taking out the initial balance and then right back into the range. It, it got all the way to SD3. So there's a perfect example of a low risk trade. You know, all the people, oh my God, the, the world's going to end. No, not before FOMC, it's not. Buy that. And boom, right back into the range. And you can see ES did the same thing, but now it's below the initial balance, whereas NQ is in the middle of the range. So I'm, um, I'm much more interested in NQ right now. ES, you know, it, it, it's tradable, but I'm going to use it just as a benchmark. 
And if I'm looking over at the, um, in fact, let's switch over there real quick just so you guys can see this before we get too close to the announcement. If I can find the darn toolbar. Of course, it's hiding again. It's always hiding. Gee, there it is. Okay. So let's just go over here and get some context real quick since this monitor doesn't screw up the recording. Okay, so you guys should be over on my, um, let me drop the thing down. Yeah, you are. Okay, so here's a look at the session for ES. Massive price rejector at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six level. And we have UB at the low. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> now, of course, we've already taken out the initial balance, but we're, as I pointed out a minute ago, we're below the initial balance range. You can see that over here on the 30 minute. That's the top of it. That's the bottom of it. And we're trading right on the low with UB right below us and a whole lot of demand below that. So this could be really interesting if it pushes down. Um, that might be worth trading. NQ, I, you, nothing remarkable here. We're in the middle. This is crunched NQ. UB at both ends. We're right on the high volume node. So I don't see anything remarkable there worth looking at. So anyway, that's the contextual picture. Particularly pay attention to this ES context. Massive UB at the bottom, perfect price rejector. We're trading below the high volume node. And uh, and this is the weaker of the indexes right now. See, it's right on its initial balance low. And um, NQ is smack dab in the middle of it. So as you can see here. So that is the contextual picture going into the FOMC announcement. And so let's switch back to my main monitor. Of course, the toolbar disappeared yet again. Okay, there we go. And boom. Okay, now we should be back on the main and cool. All right, so anyway, a couple of tips about this. You know, the announcement at the moment is two, two and a half minutes, three minutes out. If there's a huge move, I never trade the first impulse of the move. So like if we have a wicked move up, you know, I, I, I want to see where it pauses. And then I'll decide if I want to play it either way. So that's the scoop. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and put this back to MES in case we decide to trade it. And uh, da, 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 just for... Yeah, this is the full Globex session for both instruments. You can see we're pretty much in the middle. NQ is a little weaker than the middle. A lot of liquidity in ES above. Yeah, there is. Um, but remember, that could get out of the way really fast if we get going. Um, yeah, right on here, just outside the inside bid and ask. And yeah, the rest of it's thinning out. See how thin it's getting now? There's a couple of spots, but the rest of them are all low double digits. So that's that's everybody pulling their orders and getting out of the way. So we're going to get real volatile here in a minute because there's no liquidity. And then we will get the number. Well, we'll get the... So what happens is that their decision comes out in writing. And so it instantly gets scanned for keywords. And you're going to see some price discovery while that's happening and a lot of volume. And um, and then you know there'll be a little pause. It'll settle down a little bit until we get to the press conference, and um, then it'll get interesting again. So what we're looking for on the announcement is a move to one of the extremes that at least pauses enough to consider fading it. So, but remember, if it comes out a quarter basis point, look out. We could go up. I think you know, particularly if if there's any guidance that that's the end of it. Okay, this is right up at the fadeable spot, MNQ, so is ES, but MNQ more so. Okay, here we go, pushing up. Oh, I'm so tempted to get short up here, but I'm not gonna do it right before the number, but 60 is a really interesting place to be short. It's SD2. I'm talking about an NQ 60 area. Okay, one minute to the number. Look how much we're moving around now. This is the fact that the, the order book just literally disappears. Um, you know, the liquidity is really thin and it's really spread out. It's all the way up at 90 in the ES before we get any significant. So anyway, let's see what happens. One more minute. So I like that push up to the 60 area. Let's see if it can get up there. That Look at that tail. That would have been a really good spot to short. I just you know don't want to get short a minute in front of a big number. But that if we get up there again after the number, that's a perfect place to fade it. So here we go. It is time for the number in one second. Well, not the number, the decision, I should say. It said, whoa, hello, look at this. 
Okay, I guess it's a half a basis point or the market didn't like whatever it is. Oh, wow, we're all over the place at the lows is what we're doing here. Not gonna try to buy the low here. Um, remember, we're, we're flat right now. It could, if it's a bad a decision the market doesn't like, the market could drop 5% in minutes. So, you know, I, I don't necessarily wanna get short here, but we're just too all over the place. Even if you got a good entry, you couldn't get out with your profits. That happened to me in the last FOMC we did. I actually got out by getting flat, but it was crazy. I put an order in to sell 70, got filled at 76 short, you know, so it was in my favor. And, you know, I couldn't get a, a limit order in between my trade. It just was moving too fast. So, so I just hit the flat button, ended up making some money. But when that happens, you, that's a big warning. You just don't want to not have control of your trade in terms of limit orders and targets. And when it's moving around like this in price discovery, you don't. But look at this. We traded right to the low 90s and then that got bought. And now we're back up at zero, zero and heading up again. So watch 20 over here in MQ. That's the next inflection point. We just shot right through it. And now, well, we're still going up. So let's see if we can find a trade. Right now, I'm, again, you couldn't get out with your profits. So I'm just not interested yet. But a fade up here at the high could get interesting if we can push up there and and quiet down just enough that I feel like I can manage the trade. I'll go ahead and fade that, but I'm not gonna do it here. This is pretty volatile, guys. Look look at the LRCs, you know, that the 60 minute LRC, we're touching both sides of it really aggressively. That's telling you price discovery. You know, Basically all the LRCs are the same width. And again, statistically, that is the definition of price discovery. There is no range here um, that the market's respecting. You know, even if you go back an hour, it's overshooting that. So, okay, let's see if we can get a fade up here. Tempted to park a limit order like right there and see if it can come up and get me. I'm going to do that. Let's see if we can get filled at 61 short. Probably not, but it would be fun if I could. Quarter point. Interesting. So why is the market not liking that? I guess it's waiting to see what the press conference commentary is. That was what was expected, although there was a lot of people that thought we'd go up a half. So, so this is basically just the expected number if it's a quarter. So yeah, the commentary is definitely a key. And then obviously the press conference. So, so now the press conference gets really important. Why? Because what they're going to do is they're, they're, he's going to explain why it's a quarter point and what that means and you know what it means for the future. And that could be very interesting. I may nibble long down here. I'm thinking about, I like this low 80s area. Let's see if we can push to the edge of the extremes here and grab a long. Yeah, I missed it. <laughs> it turned already. So there you go. Now it's at 11. I was trying to buy 90. <laughs> oh, well. I'm going to let this settle down before I even try to trade it unless it really part, you know, like that's why I liked it long. It got down there and it just stopped going down and there was a big absorption right there at 80. I just didn't react fast enough, but we get down there again, maybe overshoot that a bit. I think I'll nibble along and same story at the other end of the top. I'll fade it if it, if it gets to sixties and, and there's evidence of selling there was before, if you go all the way back up there, yeah, it didn't even get there, but it got sold all through here. So See if we can catch a long down here. All the indexes are near their lows. That might be a scalpable trade. So like right there. This time I'm not going to wait to do it. I'll just park a limit order there and see if I get a fill. Probably won't. When I do that, I generally don't get filled. I'm usually in the right place, but I don't get filled. Let's see if this one does. So the press conference starts in a half an hour. And we're not going to break the range aggressively until the press conference. Like that's that's a really common pattern. So if you can, once it quiets down like this, if you can fade the edges, that's not a bad idea. Because until we get more information, nobody's going to you know get too bonkers. I'm going to scoot this up just a bit to about there. Whoa, not there. <laughs> Boy, that it it reset my dome, and I almost got an order at way the wrong place because I was moving it when the dome reset. You got to watch that particularly in NQ where it can move so far. I have it set to, to recenter like on 50 ticks, but that was 50 ticks right there. It just hit it. Uh, on my ES domes, I only have it do um, 20 ticks, so it doesn't get that crazy. 
But with NQ, you got to be more diligent. So let's see. I did that order's gone because I had to cancel it. So once again, let's try. There's a limit at 85. Let's see if I can get a fill down there. Anywhere near near 80 or 90 is an interesting potential long here. Let's see if I can catch a fill. In other words, right down here where it was bought so aggressively. That's what I'm talking about. If that low was really going to go before the press conference, it would have on the next the last push down. But instead, we made a higher low. So that's why I like it. Real simple. Price action is simple. You don't need to overthink it if you're trading price action. Just look at the pattern and understand what you're seeing and play the odds. The highest fadeable, the lowest fadeable until further notice. But you can't go in with a bunch of scale because you know we're just way too volatile. But uh, you know, a micro or two, you could get a nice little uh, trade out of it. Meanwhile, ah, we're pushing up. Maybe is my order still up there or it isn't? Let's get an order up there again, like right here. 55 and change, which is, let's see, that's like right in there. That's a decent spot. See if it comes up and gets me. Moral of the story, once again, like I was saying this morning, you have to let NQ come to you. Never try to play the middle of NQ. It's just suicidal. You can be right, and it can just run you over in the process of you being right. But at the extremes, it's real hard for it to get away because it's an extreme. And if it's, you know, if it's really going to get away from you, it'll be obvious. It might overshoot you a little bit, but... You know, it's a real clear spot where you're wrong, you know, and that the essence of risk management, know where you're wrong. And it's not just, you know, putting a low under the low of the day or something. You have to be more precise than that. So, for example, in this case, I've got an order sitting at 85 and a quarter and the low is down here at 71. So that's 15 points it could drop. What would I do if it did that? I'd add to it. Not aggressively, but that's a one plus one scenario. And then, you know, the odds, again, are really high, particularly when you have a tail this thin, that you'd get a move back into the range, low 90s. And so then I'd have a two lot profitable. Okay, now it's coming up to me. Ooh, I might get a fill short up here. Let's see. I'm not crazy about that idea with it coming up that fast, though, particularly since it was only a quarter point. So I just pushed that up a little higher. Now it's at 62 again, which is the area I liked before. I would have been filled right there on my 52. So it's coming up. Okay, boom, we got a fill. Let's see if we can pick off a little bit of up here. Uh, there might be something in the in the, dis, the decision that people like, and it's going to push us up. So there's the one plus one. And now it either has to work or not. I'm going to have to get out of the way. And let's see what it's doing. This could be a breakout of the range, or it just could be more volatility. Yeah, it's just more volatility. <laughs> And okay, there's one profitable, profitable. I'm trying to get the other one off and I'm chasing it. So let's move them both up and not take the risk of that. We're outside the range here. So again, we should just move into the range or I can scale a little bit more into it maybe. Yeah, we'll take one more there. And I'm gonna get these two off pretty quickly. Don't wanna let it get away from me. 80, remember that's the area I really like. I'm just scaling very slowly. Little baby swarm up here. Take one more. There it comes. Okay, let's get the profits off in total this time. Last time I only got two of the contracts off and now it's running away a bit. So, hmm. yeah, if it gets above 90, it's gonna go test 20. So that's gonna be a little too far. So yeah, shoot, the other one's doing. Oh, I don't like this up here, but yeah, oh, baby swarm it a little more aggressively. There we go. Now we'll get out with the whole thing in profit. Okay, so I'm going to put those right there. Scoot these down. We'll get the first three of the five off right here. And it's not going to let me do that. All right, this is an interesting exercise. See all the volume right there? If I can get above that, I'm going to be off sides, but I'm going to continue to Swarm this a bit because it's getting sold here. So, got to be quick. It's in the sweet spot, but it could all it could go easily go to twenty from here. So I could end up pretty far off sides. But again, with this account, I'm willing to do a little bit of that. Let's take profits fast here. Okay, there we go. Okay, got one left. Got it. Okay, cool. Now we'll protect that last one. Got a nice little profit. 
Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so that was nice. We made, oh, a quick 30 bucks on a six lot, subtract the commissions, 24 bucks, I'll take it. Again, you know, just playing with micros. But this is a, a $1,500 drawdown account that's about to be funded. It's my last one of the 20. So, um, oh, there it goes, it pushed out of there. So I, I, really good that I took profits because now it just pushed, you know, now we're, we're at zero, zero. So 20 is in play, you know, look at the LRC. We could easily go up and hit 20, in which case that gets interesting to fade because there's just no volume up here. And we're, we're look at this, we're at SD4 and NQ here. So actually, you know what? I'm going to take one here and add to it at 20 if we get up there. But I think, yeah, this is going to be profitable instantly. So let's put a quick target down there and just boom. Okay, that was another $20 bill with one micro. Are you getting that, the idea, folks? <laughs> um, again, I'm not trying to show you how much money I can make. I'm showing you a technique that just, you know, is really easy to, to trade if you just don't overthink it. Watch the extremes. We are we are at SD4 just about in, in terms of volume extremes. That's the extremes of the VWAP. Th that is, you know, one one hundredth of one percent likelihood that, you know, statistically we will go higher. But look where we are. We're in the high 90s. You know, when it gets above zero, it trades five to seven, it traded five. If it gets above five, you know, 12, 15 area, and then 20. 20 is a sweet spot for a short. It, it would be right in the, the very extremes of all the LRCs. So that is a place I will play again. And I might continue to play here, but it, it's not going down fast enough. I mean, I'm getting out with my profits, but, you know, you'd expect it to be way back in the range. And the range is way the heck down here in the 40s. And it's not doing that. You know, normally your target is the middle of the range, which is at least 60, and it's it's holding the 90s. So you don't want to sit short up here. You got to take profits fast. Yep, exactly, Robert. Yeah, if we can bust through this high, we'll get to 20 pretty quickly, and then that's going to be a delicious fade because no one's going to stay long listening to the press conference, you know, unless it's just massively bullish, which I can't imagine. We are building volume up here, though. Um, let's have a look at the footprint real quick, because ES is kind of in a similar space, although it's not nearly you know as much of a tail, which is typical. So look at that. It traded into a bunch of old zero prints. This is ES. Not a real strong top, but it certainly you know took out the initial balance high again and that price rejector I was showing you, you guys. So Let's see what the story is in NQ. Whoops, that was yes. We just saw that. Uh, NQ left. We want NQ main. There it is. Oh, look at this. Look at this absorption here. Look at how blue that is. <laughs> but just zero by two. Remember, this is crunched four to one. So, yeah, I like it short up here again, but I don't want to do it in the 90s. I want to see it get through five, and then we'll fade it again. See how we're consolidating at the high here? Very dangerous if that's pattern at the higher the low that just tells you to to be patient it's got more to go or it will retrace really hard but the fact that it's not retracing ought to be telling you you know that you you got your short trade but now you want it to be higher up if you're going to do that again also don't forget we're getting you know closer to the press conference and people are gonna probably start getting flat there you know and that should trade it down after it pushed up here but you know i don't want to chase it uh, the, the good opportunity is is up around zero zero to twenty, not down here at you know seventy nine. Okay, so if you have any questions, by all means, stick them in the chat. I will answer them as quick as I can. We have a decent turnout today. Thanks everybody for coming. I know we've got some guests as well. Welcome. Always fun to watch the FOMC trade. Oh, 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 here goes NQ again. Come on, 20 is perfect if we can get up there. Um, right here, I want to go ahead and park an order at about 19 and a half just for fun because we could squirt up into that spot. And look at that, that's 20 right there. And it, it just pushes the SD4 extreme a little harder. It's still SD4. We're, we're, we're above three and, and uh, there, I'll stretch it out so you can see it. We're working three to four, which is a really extreme spot. But it doesn't mean it, it can't go higher. It just means statistically, it's a really good spot to play. That's all. Oh, let's see. What's my biggest one-time trade I've made in my 50-year career? Oh, that's a great question. 
in terms of futures or, or anything that I traded, because uh, when I used to do options on buyout candidates, I had some ridiculously big winners. Like, you know, I, I bought $1,500 worth of options in 1973, and a year later, it was like 50 grand. <laughs> so, um, you know, but that was, I, I was, my strategy when I first started trading was I used to buy options on takeover candidates. You know, it's the old Carl Icahn, greed is good, you know, late 1970s, early 1980s, you know, environment. And so I just spent hours in the library looking for what I thought were takeover candidates, and I'd buy a few way out of the money options on them. And one of them I did that with in um, 1973 was a company called Comsat, and they got acquired by what became MCI. And I made like, like I said, it was a ridiculous gain. I don't even know what the percentage was, but it it was like 50 grand out of a grand of options. Mind boggling. So, you know, that's in terms of futures trading. When I used to trade more size, I used to primarily trade YM with fairly good size, like up to 50 YM at a time. And I had some six-figure days um, doing that. Um, so that that's kind of the answer. That makes sense. I also had a massive loser <laughs> in my early 20s at UCLA. I, I put a big, I, I thought I had the options market figured out. I put on a trade that was way too big. And if it had worked, you know, I could have retired that day. It would have been like $10 million. Instead, I lost like $200,000 in one day, which was not all my account, but it was a good chunk of it. And that taught me a lesson about managing risk because the trade ultimately worked. I just, um, you know, it, it just took took me out before it worked. And that, you know, that's what happens when you're over leveraged. Surprise, surprise, right? Trying to spread this out so we can watch it without losing the history here. You know what? Let's uh, let's go to 120 seconds. It might just be a little easier to keep an eye on this. Now it's trading back into the range, but it's still nowhere near the volume. I'm talking about NQ. The volume's down at 40. It's drifting down there. So there you go. Now it finally it took all that time for that that top to to finally get priced in, and and now it's back in the middle of the range, which is always your target when you're fading one end of the range or the other. So, so the idea to short up there was a good one, you know, could have been more aggressive. Yeah. Never get aggressive on FOMC day. I never regret it when I don't trade aggressive enough, but I always regret it when I trade too aggressive. Does that, so that should tell you a really good tip about um, how much size to use in your trading. You will never be unhappy trading too small, except you didn't make as much money as you could have. But, you know, when we, there's something very low stress of how about having just every trade work and they're small. And if they don't work, you know, you, you don't lose any sleep over it. There's just something massively good about that. You, you want, you know, that that's, if you're managing risk, well, that's how it will feel. It will feel like, you know, you, you've accepted the loss before you put the trade on. If it a loser, fine. And if it's a winner, fine, you know, it's like, it's boring. It really is. Look at that reversal up in that range. That's crazy. I moved this out to two minutes just so we could see the whole picture, how far down we went, how far up we went. Look at NQ. It pushed down to SD3 and up to SD4, and it's still working the top end of the volume. So NQ likes this, obviously. Again, I explained why. Higher interest rates hurt tech the most. So NQ is the strongest index right now, and that's why. Um, and so we'll see what happens. You know, It's the only one that's, that's markedly up. It's up a quarter of a percent. Everything else is down slightly. So you can see right there. So again, that's totally expected. So everyone's going to really want to hear what they have to say at the press conference because now the game is going to be, okay, is this it? Or are we tapering down? Or are you just pausing in the aggression of the increases? And they're going to try to put Powell on the spot with that. Okay, now I don't want to fade the volume at all here. But again, a push-up might be fadeable. Where? Well, now it's got to get back up to 1,200. But that consolidation is an interesting place to play, and that's 90 area. Uh, let's see if it gets all the way up there. I doubt it's going to. Look what ES is doing. It's just filling in the volume in the middle right on the VWAP, which is totally expected. Let's put the liquidity back up over there. So, yeah, you can see it's pretty active right in the middle there. Yeah, we are rainbow tapey. That's true. If you look at the – so this is the NASDAQ. doesn't get much more rainbow than that. You know, it's Christmas, red and green. The Dow is a lot weaker, you know, and we're seeing that. Um, the Nasdaq's the strongest one. The Russell is very Christmas rainbow, as is the S and P. So this is, you know, the, 
not by any means a get out of the way, a long ripping up market. It's definitely fadeable at the edges. And NQ is giving the best movement. I mean, you know, we're 30 points down from just that recent consolidation up there. So perfect place to play a short. I mean, it just doesn't get better than that. Well, from a TPO point of view, we have a poor week high above us. And it's right on the edge of the range. So I would be stunned if that didn't go at some point, whether it's today or later in the week. 4090 is definitely going to be in play. And we got close to it. We we got within a tick. So you know, that's that's the poor week high. And then, you know, that that's a decent amount of excess there that pushes us up to that single print that's still there. We were one tick off of that single print, the last push up. So I think we're still going to play that. I don't know if it's going to happen today or not, but it's definitely going to revisit that spot, I think. Okay, this could be an interesting place to end play NQ short. It's right at the bottom of the bounce, see here, but it's in the middle of the range, which is why it's dangerous to play it. But again, if it can't get above that area that it just consolidated in right here, then that's an, a good spot to fade it. And the bottom of that is 80, and the top of that is like uh, 1205, you know, the high. So uh, let's cancel that. Yeah, 05 is the high. So that's the sweet spot right now to fade it between 90 and 05 if it gets up there and they start selling it again. Oh, I'd love to see a run up to uh, 4,100. Absolutely. That 4,110 single print, Amy, that is the one I really want to hear. I really want to see. Yes, the volume is picking back up. That is true. So, you know, and it's coming up pretty quick. So, you know, don't just fade 92 here, but it could be a really good spot. Let's watch it. It's 92 area. See, right where that volume tail tails off, like right there. That's the first spot I would consider fading this, but I really like it if it can get up near 20. So I'm not necessarily going to play there. Let's see what it does when it gets up there. Uh, let's see. Why were you trading YM at the time? 50 contracts. Um, because YM was new. This is back in the 2000s. The, and the, the Dow contract came out. And um, there was actually a big one, just like there was with the SP. Um, and... Um, there's two reasons. Number one, when they first announced the contract for the longest time, there was no commissions on it. So you could trade it with without, you know, all you had to do is pay the exchange fees because the brokers were all promoting it. So for about two years, I traded it at that size and I never paid any commissions except for the exchange fees. So that's one reason. The second reason is um, program trades were ver really popular back in the day at that point in time. This is the 2000s. And a program trade is when a hedge fund trades a basket of equities against the futures. And they don't they do it in the S&P 500, but it's harder to play there because there's 500 equities. YM has 30. So if there were program trades in YM, it was easy to game them. You could look at the, the 30 equities, look at the futures, and you could, you could see what was pushing what and where to play it. So, um, you know, today you can still do that, but I think there are, you know, I think the micros in scale are a much better opportunity. But if they didn't exist, if we still only had minis, um, my emphasis would be on trading YM because it trades the most like MNQ and, uh, and RTY. And I used to trade the, the predecessor to RTY a lot the same way. Uh, the RTY is a relatively new contract, but there was a different uh, Russell 2000 contract it was on a different exchange before the CME bought them. So, um, so anyway, that's the answer. Hope that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. It was actually fairly easy to predict when the program trades were happening, Robert, because the tick was the way to, you know, the tick is the equities. So if we were, you know, heading toward a ledge and all of a sudden the tick popped up to, you know, plus a thousand and, you know, and then plus 1500, you, know, you would wait for the tick to get an extreme and that's where you'd look to fade. I literally had alarms on the tick itself. And I also, at that point, somebody asked me about this in another session. I also used to run the tick separately. I ran the tick for the YM, in other words, the Dow tick. I ran the NASDAQ tick. And then the, the tick itself, the, the common tick, is for the broad um, New York index. That's what, you know, when I bring this over here and I say the tick, you know, dollar sign tick, that's the broad NYSE. But I used to run another chart right next to it of the of the NASDAQ and of the YM. And that, again, for program trades was a great way to fade them just watching the ticks of those particular instruments. Yep, 
It was it was actually one of the best edges I've had over time was that edge right there of just fading program trades based on extremes in the internals, particularly the tech. Because the advanced decline takes a lot time, uh, much more time to react because it's the net up and down for the whole session of the instruments. Whereas the tick is just, are they going up or down right now? You know, one session to session, change from one session to the other. And, you know, the tick is just up tick or down tick, netted out, and that's the number. So anytime you got the tick anywhere above a thousand, and particularly if you could get it up to about 1500, that was eminently fadeable because the, the equities were going up and the futures would would get, people would would sell the equities, buy the futures or buy the equities, sell the futures. That, that's what program trades were. So, but now we have better tools. We have order flow. We didn't have order flow then. Um, and, uh, you know, the platforms are much better. When I was doing that, I was doing it on eSignal, which was actually a pretty good platform. But if you couldn't write code, and I could, but it, you know, there weren't a lot of indicators around and the stuff that was around you know, half the time didn't do what it said it did. So you had to be pretty comfortable writing your own code code. I'm trying to remember, I, I know we were talking about TradeStation the other session and its language was called easy language. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was in eSignal, something I, I, I keep thinking it was E sharp, but or C sharp, but that's um that's Ninja Trader that I'm thinking of. What was the language in eSignal? I gotta look it up now because it's bugging me. I'm old. I don't eSignal scripting language. Okay, it was called EFS. That's it. That's it. EFS. And it was a form of JavaScript. That's right. Now I remember it was JavaScript. Yep. So let's see. Would that work now looking at the tech? No, because program trades, Donna, have more or less gone away. It's um Order flow trades, you know, uh, have pretty much replaced that activity. It, there was a lag because, you know, you're trading equities against futures. So if anybody had a decent platform, you could see it happening and trade it. Um, but now the tick, you know, the tick is still a useful indicator of, of energy in the market. Um, you know, you guys see me refer to it all the time, particularly, you know, 15 minutes into the session at just getting a gauge on what the equities are doing versus what I'm seeing in the futures. But I don't think there's a there's a tradable edge there anymore. That's that's my my thought on that. Yeah, good old Java. What a piece of garbage that was. There was a bunch of old Java platforms too. Does anybody remember JTrader? <laughs> what a piece of crap that was. Yeah, tick is more like an it's a contextual filter, exactly. Bar, that's right. Most program traders have gone to HFT. No, not at all. That is a completely different world, Robert. HFT is really simple. Buy the fastest computer you can get and get as close to the exchange as you can and front run whatever you can front run. That's what HFT does. They, they, they literally are just looking to front run whatever they can. Um, this, this is different because this was... Um, yeah, very few funds do HFT trading, and the ones that do, that's all they do. Whereas in the early 2000s, every fund did program trading. Uh, there were, it was the the, the standard, and um, so they're 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 different animals. I mean, same sort of idea, but they're different animals. Very few people do HFT though. That that's a common mistake. HFT is a very specialized thing. So first masters in Java, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay in C plus and C sharp. You know, I, I can do that stuff, but, um, oh, thank you, Thomas. I really appreciate that. That, um, that makes me feel good. I'm, and I'm having a rough week, so from a health point of view. So thank you, I, that made my day. I, look, the reason I do this stuff is because, you know, if there's any legacy I can leave with all the, <laughs> You know, the 50 years I've been in the market, it's the only legacy I really have is what I could teach other people. And, you know, I, I have a lot of friends, their legacy is based on how much money they made and their wealth. And I, I grew out of that in my early 20s. I don't understand that. Why just being, you know, there's no limit to how much wealth you want, you know, the Bezoses of the world or whatever. I just don't get that, you know, I, but whatever. You know, I think it's it's megalomania is the only explanation I have. So, um, but you, you know, you get to my point in life, and it's silly. You know, just keep putting money in the bank for what? You know, and 
and and I'm a minimalist, so I don't need a lot of money anyway. I, uh, so anyway, thank you for the comment. It's um, if if 20 years from now people say, hey, you know, my mentor was Jeff, and and I made money, and I've been trading since, you know, then I will sit up in my grave and say, thank you. That's cool. You made my day. Oh, that is totally true. I have a couple of friends who are extraordinarily wealthy that didn't lose their souls. But, uh, and, and I have a reasonable number of very wealthy friends based on where I grew up and, and the businesses I've been involved in. And I got to tell you, the vast majority of them, pardon my French, are total assholes. And it's mostly because of the money. Their entire world is about money and I can't even talk to them anymore. Just, you know, some people that used to be really good friends, you know, they, they, they will do things that directly hurt other people in the pursuit of profit. And to them, that's okay. And I'm just like, you know, bite me, screw you. That's just not okay with me. So, anyway. Yep. Money is, is useful in life for a variety of things. But if your life is controlled by money, then you have a disease. It's just like, you know, if political power or anything else, you know. Um, absolute power is absolutely <laughs> compromising. And, you know, that's the trouble when you get substantially wealthy. Having a small amount of money, I think, you know, that's okay. And, you know, being a, a small millionaire or whatever, and, you know, kind of puts things into perspective and you can control your own destiny a little bit. But, you know, the people that get into the, the billion on up category and don't, understand that you know it's basically just they got lucky you know they're not they're not the end all of the world whoa okay we are selling off now right into the press conference which just started so let's go back to watching that i would not buy this dip by the way um pre-press conference this is nervousness so let's see if it can extend the low then i might buy it but not here in the middle of the middle again it's kind of at the middle of the low NQ needs to go a lot lower. See, we're not at any extremes. We're in the middle of the range here. ES is lower. It's at the bottom of its range, but I still wouldn't buy it yet. Let's see what happens here. The first question, obviously, that they're going to ask, I'm not watching the press conference, but everyone's going to want to know about it going forward, and I'm sure that's going to create some more volatility down here. Whoa, like that. Look at that little push down. Maybe there's a long down here. Let's see. Yeah, this could be one right there again in NQ. It pushed below that. Okay. Looks like we're going to take out the lower ledge, but it's, it's a decent long opportunity down here. Let's just let it get a little more extreme. Wow. Okay. We already bounced 20 points. So that, that I do like a long down here in the, the very low 70s of NQ. That could get interesting again. Let's see if we can get down there. We're at 80. There's 84. Okay. There's 80 traded again really aggressively, and it continues to. So that's obviously an inflection point. I am going to grab a long right there. So I'm long at 73.75. I'm going to protect it. There we go. Now we got a runner. Look at that. 85, 90. And there's that spot that got absorbed at 80. That's my stop right now. It's right there. Now it's going to push up some more. Let's protect it at the next high volume node. There's 90. Okay. 92 is now in play. Boom. Okay. That was a 20 pointer guys. One micro 40 bucks. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So that's what's doing it. Good, good catch, Calvin. It's a great long, but don't don't keep nibbling at it. It's got to go lower to be another good long. So we're we're at a decent extreme though. So this is a spot to consider playing. But the market wants to sell off right now. So let's let it let it extend down, and then we might be able to catch a good long. Like right in here might be one. I'm gonna ah. I was late, but I still am profitable. So I was trying to catch the 50s. I got filled in the 60s. I'm using market orders for that just because I don't want to chase it. I'm not trying to do a limit and and just you know hitting the bit of the ask won't hit it fast enough. It won't sell. So I'll end up with a fragmented limit order. So I'm just using market orders down here. That's so low anywhere in the 50s. Um, I'll play and if it blows the low out, I'll play again. So let's see what happens there. This is once again it's SD4 or SD3. It's not quite SD4 and NQ. It is SD4 and ES down at 48 there. So. 
This is perfect volatility, JVC. We're getting a perfect example of, of the FOMC trade and um, I'm digging it. I'm just watching it, watching the show. Yeah, these are perfect conditions for, for this style of trading. You know, let it get an extreme, grab an entry. And, you know, the last one was a one lot for 40 bucks with a micro, you know, that with no MAE either. And that, you know, that's what you want to see. Literally, the MAE is zero because it instantly was profitable with a market order entry. So, you know, I didn't even get burned on the, the spread. Okay. But, you know, I've had other ones where I chased it a bit too. So, you know, it's not always that perfect. Again, right now, I like the, the 60s down to 50 in NQ. I don't want to play in the middle here anymore. And, you know, the press conference is going, so it's going to be all over the place. We're getting really thin again. You can see over here, look at the liquidity, you know, 10, 20 for 10 levels on either side of the inside bid and ask. So you're, you're so sweep at risk of sweeps in that, that you have to play extremes. You can't try to play in there. It has to be down here or, you know, push down, you know, take out the low. That's the kind of stuff you have to play. Let's see if we get another shot at that in NQ. I will, I will buy another push down around the lows here in NQ because it, you know, clearly there's buyers down here. It's just, um, you know, they're waiting like me. They're being, they're being patient and you have to do that. Look, if you learn nothing else about trading NQ, Paint this on your forehead with a with a post-it note. Let it come to you. In other words, extremes and high volume notes. Do not ever try to chase it because you're going to get run over. It's too it moves too much. Okay, so we're right at twenty again. That should be a spot that it holds and goes down, and it did. But now it's going back up. So obviously it's in play right here. This is clearly an inflection point. Let's bring up the footprint for ES. We can see it's probably disputed level. Nope, it isn't. That's interesting. It's Wrong way the round on the deltas and on the pullback, buyers in control from max delta, but not convincingly. So that doesn't really tell me anything. Price rejector at the top. So one more time, let's see if we can find a spot to play this. I, I still like the high up here and I and I do like the low. I would play either end of this, but it's it's so volatile right now that you know you really got to catch an extreme which should work right away. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're pushing up again. Let's see if we can catch the top one more time. This is the 60s. I really want to play in the low 90s, which is coming up. Let's see if I can get an order up there. It's coming up pretty fast, isn't it? I'm going to stick an order right there at 92 just for fun. I'm prepared to scale. Oh, I traded 90.75 and it turned. I think I'm going to get filled here. Let's see. It's got a little bit of up energy. Nope. And there, well, that would have been 20 points right there. <laughs> that little baby pullback. So, and I miss getting filled by a tech. Uh, yeah, a tech again. Oh, well. Let's see if it gets back up there. We'll jump in more aggressively. Got filled. Okay, cool. There's the push up. All right. Let's fade that. Let's get us targets down here. There it is. Boom. All right. So we just went from 20 to 90 <laughs> and um, a two lot paid off another 47. <laughs> I'll take it. Along with three micros. Okay. Uh, when the press conference ends, it ends in a, about a half an hour, typically sometimes a little faster than that. So about noon. When they stop asking him questions, yeah, or he stops answering them. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes he'll stay. Sometimes he won't. So. Almost got 20. Cool. Yeah, I got lucky and got a fill up there and uh, and also had the one before it. So I had a nice little two lot. But now it's holding the low 90s. So, you know, that's that's the typical inflection point to push up. So let's see if it takes 20 out again. I wouldn't just necessarily short 20. Let's see. Um, there's 15. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see if we can get up there. Uh, I'm going to throw an order up here. Ah, it went right by. I didn't even have a chance to put it in. Okay, there we go. I am short 24. I'm just going to take profits. I tried to protect it, and it really doesn't make sense to protect that trade. So let's just let it come to me here. All right, whatever he's saying, the market likes at the moment. Pushing up pretty strong. Be careful here. This might be a place you could get run over short. Right at the extreme. So, you know, let's see if it wants to push them. It might. 
I'm off sides a little bit here, but that's okay. Okay, let's put another target in there and let it come back to you. Let's get two off really fast because it came right back to my entry and then it bounced again. That got up there. Okay, I'm off sides a little bit here. This is a perfect baby swarm. Got to get the fills this time. I didn't the last couple of tries on the other end. Okay, come on, you can do it. One more sweep back into the range. The middle of the range is down at 180. <laughs> so we're trading at 50. So we've got a lot of places to go here. Be careful getting too aggressive here, guys. And we're, oh, come on, let's take some profits here. Jeez, it, it right there. I keep that keeps happening. That's dangerous when that happens. I need to, I need to get my profits here and reassess this. So let's let it push down one more time. I'm going to scoot all these guys up so we can get out. It keeps tapping me and not filling because I'm just, oh, I don't want that there. It's reset on me again. Come on. Okay. Now we're off to the races a bit here. I might be too far offside, so let's see. I don't think so, but it's still right at the extreme, nice and flat here, but I'm taking a little heat I don't want to take. I just don't want to flatten it out up here since it's been at my profit spot a number of times already, so I'm going to swarm it a little bit more here. This is pretty crazy action. We're way at extremes here now to the upside. Look at this, but it's it's holding up here. So you could get we could get a short squeeze and I could end up getting trapped. So that's that's definitely a possibility, but not horribly worried about it. I just want to take profits really fast because it came down to me twice and I didn't fill. So I don't want that to happen again. So let's get those first five off right there if that is even a, an option. Again, taking more heat than I'd like, but I think I don't want to just flatten this out. Let's see if we should get a move back into the range here. Let's get this. Come on. Oh, it's right there. Come on. Jeez. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting fills. Okay. I just basically flattened that out after it took out my limits, and that was another, and that wasn't as good. I took some more heat there, but that was another 25 bucks on that five lot. Now I'm going to stay out of the way because it's sitting up here. And, um, you know, that swarm worked nicely at the extension up the range, but I had to take way too much heat on that. So it didn't move back into the range quickly enough. So now I want to watch it a little bit. Remember, you know, the premise is tech should do okay with lower interest rates. So we could get a little NASDAQ rally going into the close here, definitely. All right. Anyway, what we're going to do, we'll give it a few more minutes here since obviously it's still real volatile. Um, and uh, we'll see what what we can do with this. I, I don't want to trade this anymore now. It's moving around way too much. And whenever that happens to me, by the way, that's a huge red flag to, to sit on my hands for a little while. When when I get a position like that and it keeps going to my profit and I'm not filled and I have to really get aggressive about getting out with my profits, that's a really good warning to stay out of the way. This looks like a potential short squeeze right now, guys. Look at the extremes. So... 508 MES. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, Robert. I love seeing that. Yeah, too fast to set targets. Exactly, Robert. And this is just tricky crap. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't don't get bigger than your britches, even though there's a lot of opportunity in the movement. You know, I, you know, I had to swarm that to make that work, and that's why swarming works. But um, I, I took way more heat than I wanted to. Uh, I just I just was comfortable I could do it, but you know it's pushing up pretty strongly now. We're now we're at the next twenty up, one hundred and twenty points up. So this gets interesting yet again. We're at another extreme, but it, it's going up really strongly. So, by the way, let's have a look at the uh, internals because again that's a good look at the tech. You know, we, plus fourteen hundred is as high as we got, and now we're sitting at plus seven hundred, and the advanced decline is improving rapidly. So. The market likes what's going on in the press conference. The equities are getting bid up. So you don't want to keep fading this. You want to let that 
you know, let that get priced in. And we took out the big fat whole number. Oh, and we got the single print JVC. Look, we just got it. <laughs> I love it. That single print's been there forever. And we, a, a couple of days ago, we tapped it, but right there. And there's nothing above us here. I mean, you got to go way back to find anything anywhere near above us. Like there, there's a, there's the only artifact and that single print we just took out. So very interesting action. I'm really enjoying watching this now that I'm not in a position that I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that next 20 was a good one. I was just, that, that definitely was playable. Um, 20s are always playable, but when you get two in a row like that and you're at SD5 or whatever we're at, you know, that it's a really good, that's a really good bet. Again, you know, you're just, you're with the statistics. And then now it'll trade down to 92. So there's that perfect 20 pointer. It does that over and over again. 92 to 20 is the most scalpable range ever in NQ and MMQ. And we get it over and over again. Every time we get a test of zero, zero, you see 92 and 20 get played. I mean, look where it turned. It, the big volume is at 92 and a half. How many times have I said 92 and a half is the number? It's not magic. It just likes that number for whatever reason, you know, and now we're back at 20 again. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hear people at work comment on the smartness of their 401k. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, those are like the same people that tell me, you know, they voted for one individual or another in the presidential election because their 401k was up. And that that just demonstrates to me how ignorant they are. You know, I, I heard that a lot about the prior occupant of the White House. So anyway, um, all right, look at that. We just blew right through 20. Now we're, we're 50 is the next number in play after we get through 20. So we're almost there. There's 40, there's 42. Again, these are patterns that are just really worth knowing about. And if you just look at the LRC, you can see it. You know, we can extend up to 80 here and still be in the extreme range. So, but notice how I trade to 49.75 and then it turned. If you, if you get used to the, you know, the places that are natural inflections in the instruments, and this goes, Thomas, to your question about oil. You know, look at all the information I have by watching all four indexes. If I was trading oil, I have one thing to watch. So this, and plus I have internals and I have the equities to compare with. It's just much more powerful set of information than one, one instrument like CL or GC or, you know, any of them. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's funny. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at the comments. Uh, but, 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 okay, we covered all that. So where are we on time? We got about 13 more minutes to the top of the hour. And then, of course, we're going into the settlement for the close for the last hour. I don't want to keep going on this live session for, you know, two and a half hours, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay to the top of the hour here and watch the next rotation of the indexes. By the way, let's, uh, let's look at the footprint because, you know, Look at look at the absorption up here, zero by four hundred seven, but we're still right here. So there's a and it, and it's five hundred fifty eight on total now. So but it, disputed level, there, we're right next to each other. Longs are in control from this big forty one ten. Remember that is exactly where the single print was, and we traded right through that. And now we're kind of disputing the level up here on the pullback, and um, you know the longs are clearly in control at least for the moment. So. Very interesting scenario. Great examples today, I gotta say. Really, really cool conditions for this uh, stuff. Let's say, can you remind us the sweet spots in NQ? Uh, well, the, the ones, you missed a couple there. So 92 and 20 are in play whenever zero, zero breaks, Samuel. And so um, if we go above 20, 50 is implied. You know, we just did that. We're, we're at 70 now. And then the next setup is around 70. So 50, 70, 92 and a half. If we go through zero, zero, you can pretty much assume we're going to trade 20 most of the time. 20 is a, the, the 92 and a half to 20 is the most predictable range of NQ because th those are the overshoots of zero, zero. That's why it does that. Um, but the other ones, yeah, 50, 72. And, and after it breaks zero, zero, you know, five or six, and 12 and 15, and then 20. You know, sometimes it pauses at those on the way to 20. But um, 
the 20 is the major area that it trades most of the time. And, you know, you can just look at this, like, where did it just get up to just now? Okay, the highest 70. Remember I said, that's one of them. If that doesn't go, if that goes to the upside 90, if it doesn't, we'll trade back to 50 and we're at 50 right now. So again, just guidelines. These aren't, you know, you can't like, you know, it's not support and resistance. It's the natural rhythm of the way this instrument trades because it's so thin. NQ is, you know, it, it's very thin. There's not a lot of liquidity at any one level. It, it works in ranges. And those are the ranges it naturally respects. Uh, very much like ES does with the quarter numbers. I say that all the time, you know, zero, zero, two and a half, five, seven and a half. In any 10 points, ES does that. Like right now, it's trading 23 and a half. 25 already traded. It's going to go through 25. If it does, you'll probably see 27 and a half. If 25 holds, it'll go back to 22.5, and it just did that. And then 20, you know, that, that's very ESE behavior. And, and again, that goes all the way back to the pit. It's been going on that way in the pit forever. So. You have to add more SDs. Yeah, you know, but this is a really good look. SD4. If, if you, you know, look up, look up a normal curve and then look up the fourth standard deviation of it, it's, it's a hundredth of a percent that, you know, the odds. So when we go through that, you know, it, your, your conclusion is that it's statistical anomaly. And, you know, those can be playable, but, you know, a market can be statistically anomalous for a long time. It's just like, you know, you can, you can be overbought for a long time or oversold for a long time. It, that's just, and we're right back to 50 again after pushing one more time up to that, that uh, same level above us. So cool, cool, cool. Yeah, very rainbowy tape. This is a really mixed market and it's really volatile. So I would not be reading anything into this action other than what we have already said. Starting to maybe get a little slow up here. This could be a fade in NQ. Let's see what happens here if we can get through this level. I'm tempted to, to grab a short there, but I missed it. Let's see if it pokes through. Right on the ledge break of all these again. So a ledge break here would be a good potential trade, but it's not happening. Um, I missed it. So, all right, uh, we'll go nine more minutes. So I'll get the next rotation and then we'll wrap up so I can get some rest. Yes, that is true. The tick has pulled back, although it's it's still positive, but not nearly as extreme. And the advanced decline didn't get that strong. It only got out of the gutter. So, yeah, this probably isn't a bad place to fade. But, you know, it's pretty strong tape, so I wouldn't get too aggressive fading, but you could fade. Okay, here we go. And, ah, I missed it again. All right, but I'm profitable, so that's fine. There's another 10 bucks. See if we can catch this puke up. Got it. Okay. And there we go. Come get me. Yeah, we're doing another swarm here. That volume right there. Okay, and almost got a $20 bill out of that one. Okay, come on, you can push down. All right, push up. I don't care. You're not at 90 yet, so let's take profits here, and let's get another one on. Okay, there's one off. There they all are. There's three more for another 40 bucks. What can I say? I love NQ. It's so much fun to trade that way because you're in and out so fast. You know, the, I was in that trade... And I scaled in, and only 30 seconds was the time in the trade. And um, tiny bit of MAE there, you know, because I was swarming it. MAE was 30, but I don't really pay attention to MAE when I'm swarming. I just make sure that I'm taking appropriate risk for the conditions. All right, good job, Amy. Yeah, I'm having a decent day too, although I'm, I'm struggling with some health stuff. If you were at my morning session, I'm, I'm, I have one eye not working again. <laughs> I, I get a little um, shingles infection in my left eye sometimes, and it had been a while. I thought I was past it, but yesterday, Monday, it came back. So Tuesday, I should say. All right, let's see. We have six more minutes. Let's see what happens here. I'm not interested in doing anything up here at the moment. It's kind of consolidating at the high. And as I said, that's a dangerous thing. It can continue up really aggressively when it does that. And we're up 2% now in the NQ. So, you know, RTY is number two at 1.2, but everything else is rounding error at 1%. And the YM is, is barely up at all. And that's telling. And let's see why. Um, interesting. There's no reason for that, really. Just nothing strong there. Hmm. Okay. That's worth knowing. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing the meds. Actually, when this happens, I have to get it IV, Donna, because the only way they can get the dose high enough to have any any effect. So it's absurdly expensive. Oh, there is oral for it. It's just not strong enough. I, I do. I'm doing the oral as well. But yeah, no. When it when it gets to this point where the virus gets too aggressive, they have to do it IV because it's just too dangerous if it catches on. And, and you know, you I could lose the eye. I could go blind in the eye permanently. Don't want to do that. So I normally get these outbreaks on my back. I have one on my left shoulder right now that. Shingles is just a, another form of the chickenpox slash herpes viruses that are all over the place in a bunch of different forms. And when you get over a certain age, you, you have a risk for it. And there is a vaccine for it. But if you have it like I do, you can't take the vaccine until you are clear for a while. So I'm kind of, I keep trying to, to uh, have that happen. And meanwhile, I just deal with it. Yeah, the Shingrits is the one I'm talking about. That that wouldn't work on me right now because I have to I have to have a break before I. Oh yeah yeah you can get it young it's um. I think the first time I ever got it I was in my fifties I didn't know what it was I just thought God that rash really hurts on my shoulder what is that you know and I went to a, a doctor that didn't know anything and they told me it was nothing dermatitis which didn't make sense so of course I googled it and figured out what it was went back and they were like oh yeah okay and so. Our medical profession, you know, if you get a really good doctor, it's awesome. But the, the vast majority of the system is, you know, just doing what they have to do to survive. And it's just not a good system anymore. Look at this, 1.8, 1.9% in NQ, RTY 1.1. And the other, you know, ES is almost at 1%, but it's struggling. Definitely got sold up here. That's kind of a weird tail above. That's not a particularly strong pattern. Let's see what the footprint is doing now. Well, we went through that big absorption yet again. We've seen this over and over again where there's a big absorption and then we just trade right up above it. But now, you know, we traded above it and then we pulled back, but zero by 61. And, you know, uh, nope, not a price rejector. So I don't know. I, structurally, I think we're still in price discovery. I wouldn't read too much into that. Yes, that is true. The latest vaccine is, but it, you have to do it in two doses. And if you have any uh, of the virus in you when you get it, it the side effects are, are really bad. I've had a few friends that don't have any of the virus showing in their system. And the, even just the first shot, you know, really gave them a hard time. So I'm no interest in doing that till I'm clear for a few months, at least from an outbreak of it. And unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Three more minutes to the top of the hour. Yeah, if you've if you've never been around somebody that has shingles or you know are familiar with it, it's it's a um, it's a rash on your skin and it's really painful. I mean, I've had some painful stuff. I've broken most of the bones in my body and have a back full of titanium, so I'm acquainted with pain. And and that is the most painful thing I ever get. I mean, particularly like when it's in my eye. You know, I woke up this morning and it was just really wiped out. And even though I had it treated yesterday, so. Um, it is not fun. It's a weird infection. The virus hides in your nervous cells, in your nerve cells, not nervous cells, your nerve endings. So, you know, it, it, it really attacks your pain centers aggressively and then it goes dormant and it, you know, and you don't even know it's there. And then it puffs back up and typically only on one side of the body, which is also weird. Um, like I've had it on my stomach before, just on one side. And my back, I get it pretty frequently. I've gotten on my head, on my scalp, which is really weird. That's painful. Anyway, one more minute. Let's watch the rotation here. I'm going to put up the footprint again, and let's see what happens here. We've got a price rejector on the pullback. Look at this little tiny area that we flew through at right above that big delta. And that's a pretty good-sized delta, you know, 4,400-ish contracts. And again, if you're watching the TPO home game, you know, we're holding above that zero print. So we could easily be off to the races up here if this continues going into the close. We could get a massive short squeeze. We already have a bit of one, obviously. 
yes, stress does cause it to resurface. Like any thing with your immune, immune system, stress makes it worse. That is true. And um, not, not much you can do about that. Yep, yep, I totally get that, Donna. I've slept standing up because of that. <laughs> um, it's that it's that bad sometimes. Good job, Amy. Yes, keep your profits. Absolutely. Absolutely. God, look at this. We're going up again now. We retested SD2, and now we're heading back up to SD3 and ES. So you see how the, the this is the reason you don't need an SD5. Because you know that because it's it's standard deviations off the VWAP, you know it's self-correcting. You know the extremes get more extreme. Like now SD4 is all the way up at almost 4150. And let me put the one that has the VWAP on it from Globex. You can see how far away we are. The, the VWAP is at 81 and 4081, and we're trading at 4123. So we're a good 40 points above it. That could set up a very interesting close. You can see right there. But noteworthy that the VWAP is curling up because volume is increasing. We are building a high volume node up here. So it won't necessarily retrace. You know, if it can establish volume here, then basically what you have is a short liquidation. You know, we'll get a, a P formation up here with a, a big bulge at the top. And uh, we could close that way. So be nimble, remain nimble. Okay, let's see. Oh gosh, that is bad. My mom had Alzheimer's, as you guys know. I was her caregiver for many years. Uh, 3 p.m. question mark. I'm not sure what 3 p.m. question mark is. Volume time. Still don't understand. Algos turn on. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not a proponent of the, the algos as superhuman, whatever, <laughs> turn them on. No, you know, the algos, look, algorithms used by large traders and aggressive funds are nothing more than automated execution models. They turn them on when it's appropriate that, you know, there isn't some time of day that algos switch on and off. You know, that that's Twitter nonsense. If that's what you're saying, I, I'm not criticizing you, but it's nonsense. There's no magic time. <laughs> People that use algorithms to execute positions for them do it all the time. They don't turn them on at 10 minutes to the close. Or, you know, that, that's just that's just furu nonsense. If, if I'm an aggressive fund using algorithms to help me execute, I'm going to be using them whenever I'm trading and I have appropriate algorithms for every style of trading that I do. It's literally that simple. There's no magic to it. There's no, they turn them on and, and the market gets crazy. You know, it doesn't work like that. That's that's Twitter nonsense. So just, just to be clear. So, okay, so you've noticed certain volume at various times of the day. Thomas, that's volume at those times of the day. Don't ever don't attribute things to algos because that, that's Twitter's excuse for I don't understand it. So I'm gonna say, oh, the algos did it. That, that's that's just anybody using that kind of language is is demonstrating that they really don't understand how the auction works. So, you know, I'm sure you're quoting it from other things you've heard, but I, I would forget the existence of algos. It, you know, who cares? You know, trade what's happening. The auction is the auction. And how people are trading it is really none of our business. We just trade what's happening. Hopefully that makes sense. Th those, those are times when there are things happening, but there are no algos that, that exploit them, is my point. Various, well, there's always changes in rhythm, yes. And those things can cause it. But again, don't put VWAP in there. Just, you know, different markets opening and closing affects, um, affects the trade. And every Friday I do a class on the equity settlement versus the futures. And I discuss, you know, the relationship to VWAP and, and whatnot. Um, but th there is no magic equation to it. It, it. it depends on what's going on. And, you know, we can, we can close... 60 points away from the VWAP and um, and then, you know, a, a similar session at extremes, it will close right on the VWAP, you know, right at settlement. So you, you, you can't just necessarily use it as an edge. It's just helping you understand the nature of the extremeness. That, that's, so what I'm doing on this view, the five second view with LRCs is I'm looking for the range and extremes of the range, Thomas. What I'm doing over here with the VWAP 
and where we are extremes of the VWAP is extremes of the volume. The VWAP is the average of the volume. So these are extremes measuring that. But when you're moving up this strongly, it's really not a very useful measurement because you know, value will catch up. The, the, you know, this idea that there's a reversion to the VWAP is nonsense. The VWAP and price will ultimately coincide or come toward each other, but typically, you know, the VWAP will come up to the price if there's volume up here. It, we won't revert to the VWAP. So, you know, all that stuff is kind of foolery stuff that people sell on Twitter and most of it's kind of nonsense. It's, it's just a measurement of the extremes. Hopefully that makes sense. No, see, I don't agree with that. I wouldn't sit on hands at those times. I trade those times because there's more opportunity. The extremes are where the opportunity is. Hopefully that, that makes some sense. Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit. Um, Donna, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up here. So we are right after 12 anyway. So uh, this could be a really interesting close, but I wouldn't have any preconceived notion. We're getting massive absorption again right here at 30 in ES. Let's see if that level pukes, it probably will. And there it goes, 32, boom. And then right back to 30. Perfect little trade for uh, upcoming tool in the emoji suite. And now we're continuing up. Boy, we could get to the next 20, Robert. <laughs> So we have another 20, we've been through two of them already. So this gets really interesting again on the next one up, but look, you know, look at the LRC, we could trade easily to 12.5 with this, this momentum that we have. So I wouldn't just necessarily fade that 20, but it's right there, it's coming up. And I bet we're gonna get it right now here, let's see. So there's my markers on 21, let's see if it pops up there, it should. It should blow through this ledge and get up there pretty quickly, but we're also pretty extreme, so who knows getting some absorption right here too yeah we are we are getting a lot of absorption right there at 35 after getting absorbed down at 30. yeah so, you know th th this is a really tricky tape to read into because there's just so much momentum and there's all notice how much of the volume just shot up you know obviously okay there's 17. wow look at go yep 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 that's just crazy just riding sd3 up look at that so somebody's got some longs they'd happy to take profits on here oh yeah yeah look at that right there look at all that volume 2200 on the ask for that that one spot right there just just 4500 if you count them all but just the last touch was 20 and then once they're out of the way we should have oh, a nice yeah. little squirt and look at that ledge yeah we're going to blow that ledge but the question is where you play it from and how it, it's tricky I'm not going to try to do that in ES. Throw up the, there, it goes. Uh, there it goes. Yeah, <laughs> I was switching to MES to play it, and I couldn't do it fast enough. That was we quite a pop, right too. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. Great Ooh. stuff. And that right back to 15. Back Look in. at that. Yeah. Oh, Man. Wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a good one. Be uh, be nimble here. I wouldn't just be fading this up here. You know, we could look if we really get a short squeeze going. Now the other RTY and ES are now above one percent. YM has to join the party. But if it does, we could easily go up. You know, another couple of percent on whatever this little short squeeze is. Clearly, it caught some people off guard. So um, yeah, it could be fun. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for the kind words. We do have some stops up here, by the way. I'm just looking at the footprint on my other monitor. Let me show you that real quick. We did run stops right up here and we got some absorption. So now we're trading right back to big delta right there. Look at that. This is textbook. And now we're gonna go take out the ledge again. Oh, this is such textbook action. Probably blow through those stops and run it up a little higher. Oops. And there it goes. As I said, it was. <laughs> oh, we're absorbing right there to boom. There it goes. All right, cool. All right, this was fun. Thank you, everybody. Um, have a good one. We will see you. Uh, let's see, tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow's so fishing we, trip. Yeah, oh, fishing trip. That's right. And um, hopefully, we're going to have a couple of special guests tomorrow. So, those of you joining us on the fishing trip, yes, indeed. Uh, should be fun. All right. Well, cool. yes, we will do this again Friday. Absolutely. Um, so, I will see you guys then.